Tegenzeer Quirinus Dunkel Doppelbock. Welcome to another edition of Bands, Bikes <coughs> and Booze Reviews. Okay now, I haven't been well for the last couple of days so I haven't done any reviews. So this is going to be my first review in three days. I haven't had a beer for three days. That is a fucking record for me. Let me tell you that. So why not ease myself in gently with a, a nice strong Doppelbock. Now this is a Doppelbock from the Tegenzia Brewery or Brow House, whatever you want to call it. And it is from Bavaria in a place called Tegensee, which is sort of southern Bavaria. Very nice part of the world, very rural. Absolutely gorgeous scenery, never been there, seen photos. Must go, will go one day. And this is a beer from a very good brewery indeed. I've tried quite a few of their beers and they're quite widely available for a brewery that's quite small. It's got a range of beers that are quite readily available on a number of UK websites, which is good. The Hellas is good. The Dunkel beer that they do is very good. They do a Pilsner. They do a special beer called uh, Max Joseph, which is really nice as well. And when this became available, I thought well, I have to get this because Doppelbock is one of my favorite styles of German beer. I absolutely love it. It's nice and strong. It's usually dark and it's usually a winter beer. And even though the sun is shining at the moment out there, it is absolutely fucking taters. It is freezing out there. So I'm going to have one of these. Now, Doppelbock is an interesting style of beer. And I'll just give you a quick overview of how it came about. It was originally brewed by monks. And monks would drink it in the period of fasting. And what they wanted to do was basically get a beer that would give them all their nutrients when they were fasting. So they, obviously they weren't eating and they would just drink beer. And, but it had to get papal approval. I mean, this is going way back. And uh, they sent a sample off to Rome. And of course, that is a long journey by foot to Rome. And the beer spoiled on the way. And when the Pope tasted it, he thought it was absolutely fucking disgusting. And he said, well, if they're going to drink that, that is a form of penance. It tastes so disgusting. So yeah, crack on. What he didn't realise was they were drinking it fresh and it was absolutely gorgeous and the rest as they say is history. Now originally this, that style of beer wasn't called Doppelbock, it was called Salvatore. I think that was the original name that the monks came up with. But Paulana relatively recently have copyrighted that name so nobody else can use Salvatore as their, as the name of their Doppelbock if you like. So what they've done is, in a, and to be fair to the Tegunzi Brewery, they haven't done that. They've called it Quirinus, and a couple of other brewers haven't done it, but a lot of them have. And what they've done is they've added the suffix T-O-R to signify that this is their Doppelbock. I'll give you a couple of examples. You've got the Triumphator here, can you see that? From Lovenbroy, and you've got the Bayavator, which comes from Tucha. Hacker Shaw also do it. I think it's Maximator is their one. And obviously there's a, there's a range of them, but all end in T-O-R. Usually Bavarian brewers that do it, but there are breweries outside that do Doppelbox. But yeah, some of them do end in T-O-R, others don't. And this is one of them. This is, is Quirinus. I have no idea what that means. Couldn't find any information on it, but there you go. Anyway, let's get this beer open. It's a 500ml bottle. It is a 7% beer, quite hefty. I've had doppel box that range from 7% all the way up to 8.5. So the ABV is, 
it's pretty hefty on this. It's not a session beer. Well, you can if you want, but you'll end up fucking mullered. And uh, it's 500 ml bottle. Sell by date is 12, uh, 12, 11, 21. So it goes out of date this year. And that's pretty much it, really. It's got the, you see that? That's the Vittelbach coat of arms, the checkered blue and white, light blue and white. And they, you, see, you find that on a lot of Bavarian beers. The Wittelbach was, of course, the Bavarian royal family that more or less pioneered German beer. Well, they had the monopoly on it. There's the label. Oh, this auto focus. One day it works, some days it doesn't. A bit like me. And there's the cap. Very similar to the Hofbrau cap. And the first time I, looked, I saw this, it was in the... It was in the crate and I thought, have I ordered a Hofbrau beer that I can't remember? Of course, it's Tegensy. And the reason it's got HB on it, if you notice that, it's the Herzoglich Bayerisches Brauhaus Tegensier. That is the name of the brewery. So there you go. Let's get it open and let's see what's going on. Right. There's the cap, as I said. Now, I'm not going to lie to you. I had this the other day when I was watching the West Ham game when we beat Sheffield United. And I, was, I got two of these for some reason. I can't remember why. I must have misordered them. I'm oh, no, no. Um, beer Sniffers replaced it because I ordered a beer and they didn't have it in stock, so they gave me two of these. And I'm glad they did, actually, because I, I did try it the other night. But I didn't have my sampling head on i was f already three sheets to the wind watching west ham we was three new up and i thought i really fancy another beer i cracked this open and that finished me off what are we getting on the nose well a bit of sulfur now let's let it just calm down a little bit that glass is filthy i knew this glass was going to be filthy there is something up with that dishwasher nice now this is typical of what you get on a Doppelbock. Very, very strong, nutty, malty aromas. And that really does come through on that aroma. And that, that's all it's about, is just the malt. The very, very little hot character on this at all. It's all about the ethanol. In some cases, not all. Some of them you don't even get the ethanol in it, which is a bit dangerous. But you're getting a little bit on that. But it's all about the roasted malt. Sweet roasted malt. And if it tastes as good as it looks, then this is going to be an absolute cracker. There it is in the glass. It looks like a dark chestnut brown colour. Off-white, one and a half finger head. Fair bit of carbonation on that, but not too much. This is chilled. It's come out of the fridge chilled. And I have noticed with these beers that you can still get more or less all the flavours when they are chilled as well. So let's get it down the hatch. Zum Wohl, as they say in Germany. Oh, that is lovely. There's a bitterness on that as well, on the finish, which is unusual. And I'm just trying to work out if that's coming from the roasted malt or whether there is actually a little bit of hop character on it. Let me just dive in again. Mm. Yeah. That's roasted malt, bitter, sweet, nutty, roasted malt, <clears throat> all the way through. There is a hint of ethanol, but it's not big. This is all about the malt. And it's really nice. I'm just, the window's opening and there's some sun coming in. I'm just looking at it through the, through the window, holding it up to the light. I don't think you're going to be able to see that, but it is an absolutely gorgeous colour. Reminds me of a, a really good English bitter or ruby ale and it's lovely it really is good a 
little bit of that ethanol coming through now, a little bit more. And it's quite nice. It is good. It's more or less what I'd expect from a good German Doppelbock. I will say it's not the best one I've tried. I've got a few in mind that I really liked. This stuff from Tuca, and it's why I kept the bottle. I'll just get my little, uh, would you believe that's a teaspoon? It's a, a little bass guitar. Lucy's niece got me that for me 50th. And uh, what have I got in the bank? Oh yeah, stainless steel. That does not look like stainless steel to me. Anyway, it's uh, I don't know what, it's supposed to be a bass guitar. It, it, it's a cross between an acoustic guitar and a bass guitar. She wanted me to use it for the tea. I ain't using that for tea. I'm gonna keep that, but this is what I'm talking about here. This is the, <clears throat> the Bay of Ata. And the reason I kept that, that was one of the best that I've tried so far. The Lovenbroy, or the Lovenbroy, the Lovenbroy Triumph Tour was another good one as well. And there are some others as well. The Hackershaw Maximator, absolutely superb, really good. And the Paolo and the Salvatore was good as well. But for me, I think that, that Tuca one was really good. But I have had some shit beer from Tuca. So that's surprising that they've come up with an absolute monster of a beer like that. And then they've turned out some dross. I know they're a contract brewer and they, they contract brew for small breweries that have basically can't keep up the can't keep up the demand for their own beers and they uh they contract brew for them and sometimes you wonder whether they're cutting corners or whether they're doing exactly what the the brewery that asked them to contract brew whether they're actually doing what they've asked because some of the beer has been absolutely fucking shocking which is unusual in bavaria but what do i know anyway i'll dive in once more Yeah, it's good, no complaints. Wouldn't be my first choice though. But it has got all the characteristics that you would expect from a, a Doppelbock. There's no nasties in there. And on its own, it's a pretty good beer. But when you, uh, you know, I, I do make this point and put, you're probably sick of hearing it, but when I'm drinking a Bavarian beer, I hold it up to the very highest yardsticks, which are brewers like the the Munich Six, and some outside as well were very good too. And this, I think, is just a little bit, a little bit lacking in flavour and quality, in my opinion. But, you know, on its own, it is still a fantastic beer. I really like it. So what's the verdict on Tegunzia? Quirinus Doppelbock, Dunkler Doppelbock. I don't know why they call it Dunkler. Dunkler, I assume, means darker. But Doppelbocks are always dark. I've never seen a, a light or lighter coloured Doppelbock. They've always been dark from memory. Bock beer certainly has been light. That ranges in colour from like a Hellas type colour to an amber. But Doppelbocks have always been dark. But they've seen fit to call it that. But it's nice. I do like it. As I said, not the best I've tried, but certainly nothing wrong with it. I'm gonna give it, I'm gonna give it an eight out of 10. And the price, I'll tell you the price. I got it from Beer Sniffers. The price was 357. And I would say to you, if you see a craft brewer, and that, again, you know, it sounds like I'm knocking these craft brewers, but if you do see a craft brewer, and I have seen them doing what they call a doppelbock, and you'd compare it to something like this, I imagine they would charge a lot more and it wouldn't taste as good. I know that's a blanket statement, I could be proved wrong, but I've yet to find one or a brewer that would do something like that. And I'll give you an example. There's a craft brewer whose name escapes me, but they're based in Walthamstow. And they're the only craft brewer I've seen do an ice bock. Now, if you're not sure what an ice bock is, I'm going way off the topic here, but just bear with me a sec. There's a style of beer in Germany, particularly from Franconia, and which is in Bavaria, and it's called ice bock. And basically what they do is they brew what is effectively a doppelbock, but 
while it's fermenting, they will not freeze it, but they'll, ha they'll keep it in very, very cold storage. So the water in the beer will freeze and they'll scoop that water out and just leave, because the alcohol won't freeze, obviously. And it produces a much more intensely flavored, higher ABV beer. And they call it Icebock. And it's probably, I think, could be wrong, but I'm pretty sure it's the strongest style of German beer that you can get. And it's normally about the 8%, in between eight and 9%. And I've tried it, Kornbacher, they're renowned for it. I think they, they might have even invented it. I'm sure it was done by accident because they've probably lagered in some Doppelbock and it got so cold, there was ice in there. So they scooped the ice out and thought, fuck it, we'll just, you know, we'll just serve up what we've got left. And it turned out to be absolutely amazing. You know, serendipity when it comes to brewing, you know, that's, that's what it's all about, you know, uh, innovation. And that's what they did. And Icebock is a very nice style of beer. But the point being, when I get back to this craft brewer, they do an ice box as well, and they're, they're the first ones to do it. They were charging seven pound a bottle for an ice box. Now I didn't try it because I am very wary about paying seven pound for a, a craft brewed style of beer that is mimicking German stuff. I would rather, if I was going to spend seven pound on a bottle of beer, and I'm not a rich man, but. If I was going to spend seven pound on a bottle of beer, it would be one of the Belgian expensive Gerzes or something like that, you know, from a company like Cantillon or something like that. I wouldn't really risk it on a craft brewer. And this is probably going to sound like a real trite statement, but I am going to bet my bottom dollar that their ice box for seven pound it's not as good as the Kornbacher stuff. And this is my point. And it sounds like I'm knocking craft brewers, but I, I just refuse to pay that sort of money for beer that I know is brewed better by German brewers. Now, you could slag me off saying, oh, you're not supporting craft brewers, you're not supporting British brewers. Yeah, but they're not helping me out either, are they? They're not brewing good beer that's cheap. And I know they don't get the breaks with the cheaper malts and stuff and cheaper ingredients, but... You know, what about the working man? What's he supposed to do? And, you know, I like good beer. And if I see an ice box for seven pounds brewed by somebody over here, or I see a, an ice box brewed by the company that invented it, and it's cheaper, what am I gonna do? I mean, it's, it's, it's a fucking no brainer to call it an American term. But anyway, that's, <laughs> that's just a little rent. Tune in for more rents. There will be plenty. But as far as this goes, I'm going to give this an 8 out of 10. I don't recommend it. It's not a bad one, but there is better out there and probably cheaper as well. So, you know, if you're stuck for a doppel book, then this is good. But there is better out there. I'd recommend, you know, the ones I just said, the Hackershaw, the Tuka, the Lovenbroy, Paulana, any of the any of the Munich brewers, I'd say are better than this. But this is still good. So 8 out of 10 and recommended with a little bit of a caveat. And remember, beer is working class champagne.